Some people have normal jobs. Monday through Friday, 40 hours a week, health benefits, bonuses each year, retirement funds. Well, not me. I don't have a normal job. It's not easy doing what I do, but it pays the bills since I can't get a regular job due to my criminal record. I'm a janitor that works for the dark web and I clean up murder rooms once the buyers are done torturing and killing the victims they paid for. I've been doing it for the past three years. Every time someone needs help cleaning up the bloody mess they made, I go in and clean up. I make sure there is not a single drop of blood in the room and dispose of the leftover body parts any way I could. No evidence remaining. No questions asked. In fact, I can never ask any questions. These people cannot be messed with. I just get paid to do my job and go home like nothing. It's a sick job, but they would pay me very good. But all that would change one night when I started to finally question my morality. It was one night when they called me to do a job. It's always at the same location, which is 40 miles from where I live in a rundown warehouse. I was called to clean up a room, which really was no problem at all. But I noticed, or barely caught on to something, I never thought twice about. As I was cleaning the room that was covered in blood, I saw a small picture on the floor. I picked it up, and it was a picture of a little girl, probably around 14 years old. This made me think right away that this was probably the victim whose blood I was cleaning up just now. It gave me an uneasy feeling inside, and for the first time, kind of disturbed me just for the fact that these people are now using kids as their victims. But again, this was a job where no questions are asked. I put the picture in my pants pocket and continued cleaning. Once I was done, I packed up my things and quickly got out of the warehouse. I went inside my car and instantly, I got a call. It was them. They always call private. I answered and they asked me if I was done cleaning up. I told them yes and that I just got into my car. They then told me that they left the money inside my glove compartment while I was inside cleaning and they'll probably have another job for me in the next two days since they have a customer who is already waiting. I knew I shouldn't have done this, but I decided to ask how old was she. Referring to the victim, they hung up the call. I'm sure they were pissed just with me asking. I didn't know if I should continue doing these type of jobs anymore, but I didn't know how I would get out of this without some possible threat to my life. I got the picture of the little girl and put it resting on the passenger side. I went home that night, contemplating everything. It was the next day around 9 o'clock at night when I got a private call. I knew it was them and I was tempted not to answer, but I did anyway. They gave me the same location again and to be there at 4am. This time, no questions asked. Juan Miguel Santos of 3905 North 16th Street, the call hung up. This was a clear threat. Just do my job and get out of there. I would need to leave town the next morning and disappear after this. I arrived at the location and saw there was an old Grand Marquis parked outside. Usually there shouldn't be any cars but mine at the location and got worried that maybe these people are keeping a close eye on me. I stepped outside my car and walked slowly inside, feeling more and more paranoid with each step I took. The hallways were darker than before and I saw light coming from the room I was supposed to go in. I entered inside and my eyes couldn't believe what they had just seen. There was a girl in the middle of the room tied up and gagged to a chair alive. The job wasn't done yet, but then I saw a body of a man laying right on the floor next to the girl that looked to be around 16 years old. The girl began to scream at me and I started to freak out even more. 
I ran to the man on the floor and checked his pulse. He was gone. This was the man that was going to kill this girl since I saw a scalpel on his right hand. I walked myself out into the hallway and immediately got a call. Private. It was them. Is everything okay? They knew something was up. They also had cameras in the hallways, but not in the rooms. They must have seen I was nervous. Yes, everything's okay. Finish the job and get out. We'll leave the money in your car. They hung up, but I knew they knew something was wrong. I went back inside the room and the girl was yelling at me to help her with the gag in her mouth. I didn't know what to do. I needed to dispose of her body, but that meant I needed to kill her first. I looked around inside the man's bag and he had several weapons and tools inside, presumably to use to torture the girl. I pulled out a power drill and turned it on. The girl started to scream even more, telling me to stop. She was crying her eyes out. I aimed the power drill at her face, and more tears started to run down her face. I put the power drill down. I couldn't do it. I took off her gag and asked what had happened. She told me that the man fell on the floor and seemed like he had a heart attack. You know that I can't let you out of here. These are dangerous people and there are cameras everywhere inside this building. We both looked around the room. What about him? Asked the girl. I looked at the man and saw he had a hoodie. I took it off and gave it to the girl. Put this on and cover yourself and run as far as you can away from here. I'm scared. What if they find me? The girl said. I looked inside the man's pockets and found some car keys. They must have been for the car that was parked outside. Here, take these keys. I think the car that's parked outside belongs to him. Whatever you do, do not go to the police. They will find you and they will kill you. Just go as far away from here as possible. Before she left, I asked her for her name and she said it was Crystal and that she was 17 years old. I was scared for her. I knew they might have even been outside waiting for me to finish. Before she stepped outside, I looked around the lot to see if it was clear for her to go. There were only but two cars outside and she quickly ran to the Grand Marquis. She said thank you and took off. I went back inside and quickly got my things. My phone started to ring. It was them. I ignored it and quickly ran to my vehicle. As soon as I was about to take off, a car was approaching from behind me. The car parked right behind me and two men in masks stepped out. Not only that, but they opened the backseat of the car and took out Crystal. They caught her. They knew everything we had done. I should have taken off. One of the men took out a gun and pointed at me to step outside my vehicle. I stepped out and they wanted for me to go inside. They took me and Crystal into the room with the client's dead body. I knew what they were going to do to us. Crystal couldn't stop whining and moping. This is what happens when you try to be a hero. I needed to do something before we would be dead bodies right next to the one that's already on the floor. I saw that Crystal was right beside the switches to the lights. I looked at her and signaled with my eyes to the switches to turn them off. The moment Crystal turned off the lights, I ran towards one of the masked men. Gunshots fired as the men were yelling to turn on the lights. I grabbed the power drill that was on the floor and drilled it right into the man's chest. I stuck the drill all the way in and didn't stop till I heard the man gurgling, choking from his own blood. I got off him and heard Crystal breathing hard and yelling. I turned on the lights and witnessed Crystal stabbing the other masked man repeatedly with a scalpel in the face. Half of his mask was gone from the punctures. I got Crystal and told her to stop. She was frightened. Terrified. 
She hugged me tight and began to cry. Both of us had made it out alive this time. We walked over to my car and took off. Both of us covered in blood. The sun was coming out because it was already 6.30 in the morning. We both needed to change our identities and I knew a guy who could do it that I met in jail and drove over to his place right away. Sometimes I do think that maybe it would have been better off if both of us were dead since we would now have to live in fear for the rest of our lives. Luckily, I haven't heard or seen anything, but you never know. These people always manage to find you. Let's hope they don't catch me now or for the rest of my life. Shout out to my superfans, Sweet Black Swan, Tacey, and Brooklyn. I really appreciate you guys supporting my channel, and I really look forward to making more content for everyone.